Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this information workshop for the Best Idea 2021 competition. Um, as you can see on the agenda, we'll have three presentations to start with. Um, to give you first um, an introduction to, to how Best Idea fits into the activities of the association as a whole from Rick, then some key information from, from Mark Zolver, and then a presentation of our draft um, of the template abstract by, by David Bomer, the Secretary General of CESAR. Um, during the workshop, you're invited to enter questions directly into the Q&A function of Zoom. And then the second part of the workshop, we'll um, answer as many as we possibly can. So please enter during, during the session and then we will come to them in the second part. So now I would like to introduce um, Rick. Um, Rick van der Waller, who is the president of Cesar and the rector of Ghent University, to, to give a welcome address. Um, so Rick, please. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, welcome to, uh, welcome to uh, all of you. Um, we should switch on the video. Now the video is on. Now you should see me somehow. Welcome to all of you. It's very nice to have you on, on board. We would have preferred, of course, to have a physical meeting, but this just doesn't work in these uh, pandemic uh, times. Uh, that's the reason why we are organizing a, a webinar. We have many, many people on board, and this is, this is just great. Um, as has been said before, uh, I am the director of Ghent University, and I'm also the, the president, the current president, the president of Cesar, which is the reason why I will. Uh, uh, present some very limited number of, uh, of slides. Uh, next one, please. Uh, basically, I would like to uh, to to got four four points on the uh, on the agenda. I will tell you something about uh, Cesar. What is Cesar? Who are we? Uh, what is our purpose? What is our vision? I will tell you something about our work plan for the period 2020-2021. Uh, then I will tell you something about uh, how we as universities and we as a network, Cesar is a network of universities, as you know, how we would like to uh, contribute to, uh, to, to sustainability. And then, of course, we have uh, the main topic of, uh, of this webinar, which is uh, giving you some, some uh, side insights from, from, from backstage, so to speak, with respect to the Best Idea 2021 competition. Um, next, to start with, um, what is Cesar? Who are we? Well, basically, we are a, a network. We are an association of uh, universities. We are an association of more than 50 uh, research intensive uh, universities. And we have both what you could call comprehensive uh, universities and uh, universities of science and technology in Europe and uh, beyond. So next one, please. Um, our network uh, has been uh, has was started has been founded uh, exactly uh, 30 uh, years ago. So this is a very special year for Cesar as a as an association. We, we have our anniversary. Um, so we well, our age is a, is a 30 years, uh, and we started as a as a what you could call a rectors club, a club of rectors of of universities. Rectors coming together. To share um, ideas, that, to share concerns, uh, to share their vision on how their universities should, should operate uh, in the in the future. Uh, in recent years, uh, however, we, we have become more focused on, on advocacy, advocacy on behalf of our members. So Cesar has, has 53 members. And one of the main tasks of Cesar is, is to do advocacy related to the European Union, related to, to politicians, to policymakers, to whoever who has impact uh, on, on research and, uh, and technology science and technology, but also social, uh, social sciences and um, humanities. Uh, so now we actually we look to inspire uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a thought leader, and we consider ourselves really to be a thought uh, leader, that is our ambition to be a thought leader, 
uh, and be more, more relevant to the researchers and the students at our, at our members, at the universities who are members of uh, CESAR. Next one, please. Can I have the, yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, just, just to let you know uh, what so, some of the number, the key numbers uh, that somehow identify who, uh, who we are and, uh, and what we do. I already told you that, that we were founded 30 years ago, which is of course uh, 1990. Uh, we are hosted in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium and we are one of the, one of the most important stakeholders stakeholder organizations for the European uh, research um, area and also for the European Commission's uh, open science policy um, platform. Uh, apart from that, or on top of that, we are recognized as a, what is called a key European stakeholder for, for research um, policy by the European um, uh, Parliamentary Research uh, Service. So this is, this is our role. We, we really have a strong voice um, we have some voice in, in Europe, we have some voice in, uh, in Brussels. We try to have impact on, on the policy making uh, in the European Union and, and, in, uh, and in Brussels. With respect to our members, and of course our members are much more important than, than the organization itself. The organization is working for the members, uh, so members are, are important. So let me give you some numbers about these, uh, these members. All these members uh, together have more than 1 million students. So we are somehow representing 1.1 uh, million stu students to be, to be uh, precise. Uh, about uh, 200,000, 190,000 to be precise, uh, are, are students um, um, coming from, from abroad. And we have uh, in total almost uh, 100,000 uh, academic staff. So we are a huge a huge organization. It's really fair to say what I already said, uh, namely that we are one of the most important uh, um, university networks, university associations in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, we, our members um, uh, are really high quality um, universities. Uh, just, just to illustrate this, uh, last year, actually 2020, uh, our members in total have been awarded uh, more than 900 uh, grants um, from the uh, so-called European Research uh, Council uh, projects, uh, so the ERC project, as you as you might know, uh, ERC uh, project mandates are are one of the most prestigious uh, projects or or mandates you can you can get in 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 Europe. So we are very very successful. In that in that competition, we obtained more than 2,000 grants uh, from the uh, uh, Marie uh, Solovska Curie uh, actions, which is which is which is great as well, and only proves that we are really a high quality uh, club of uh, of universities. Um, and there are more than 7,500 um, collabor collaborative projects with a with a collective. Uh, and a combined value uh, for, of uh, more than four billion euro. So these are huge, these are huge numbers. Uh, uh, we are we are import, important. We are high quality, uh, and this only this only proves what I just uh, said. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I already said uh, that we have we have a work plan. We have a we, we have a work plan for two years. So the years 2020 and 2021. And our current work plan has been uh, approved, has been adopted by our board of, uh, of directors um, early this year, March, uh, March 20, 2020. And actually, um, at the center of that uh, work plan is our ambition to, uh, to have impact to 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 uh, to realize uh, an ecological uh, to realize more um, to realize ecological economic and 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 social sustainability for us as an organization as Cesar sustainability is really crucial and it's not only crucial in in terms of plans and vision and 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 and, and documents but we really want to do something in order to improve 
sustainability. We want to contribute to more um, sustainability, uh, ecologically, uh, economically, and, and, and socially. Uh, so for us, um, sustainability is really, uh, is really crucial. We want to do that by, by, uh, by doing research. We want to do that by providing educational programs. We want to do that via our policy making as an organization. We want to do that by, by stimulating our members, these 53 universities, to, to focus on uh, sustainability, each of them uh, as well. So, so once again, sustainability is really a key thing uh, in our, in our um, way of thinking, in our way of working as a, as a, research, a research association. Um, on top of that, we really want to contribute, contribute to the realization, uh, realization of the so-called SDGs, uh, which have been put forward by, by the United Nations, as you, as you know. Um, so, so we really want to be, to be very active and, and, and to have impact with respect to the uh, uh, United Nations uh, SDGs as well. Can I have the first, uh, the, the following slide? And uh, actually, um, once you say as, a, as an organization, as a network, we want to have impact on, on sustainability, we want to do something uh, in favor of uh, sustainability, of course, you have to come with concrete actions. You, you, you need to do something. And we do many things as uh, Cesar, but one of, the, one of the most important things we, 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 we did plan was to organize what we call the best idea 2021 um, competition. Uh, and as you know, we launched uh, a call, a call for abstracts for that competition. We launched that in September and we are really uh, inviting and we would like to stimulate uh, student-led teams, student-led teams from, from, our, from our members to, uh, uh, to submit proposals. Uh, for us, this is, a, uh, this is an activity which allows us to connect with our members, which, which allows us to do something concrete with respect to, to sustainability, but also uh, it is something that allows us to connect um, an organization of uh, an, an association of universities with students. And of course, um, um, students are the future. I mean, I am, I am director of university, I'm the president of, of, of Cesar, but uh, I'm an old man. Uh, uh, the future will be, uh, um, uh, will be shaped by our current students. And that's why we really believe as a, as a university association that we should uh, get connected with our students. We should uh, motivate our students to come up with, with, with innovative, bright, ambitious uh, ideas. Uh, maybe they will come up with, with dreams and some of them will be realizable and uh, can be realized and, and some others maybe will not be uh, realistic. It doesn't matter. I mean, we really want to uh, uh, invite and encourage students to dare to, to think, to dare to uh, come up with ideas, to, to, to dare to express their ideas, to dare to, to jump into, into a kind of a competition in order to get the best ideas out of all these students uh, with respect to, uh, to, uh, to sustainability. That is the purpose of this, uh, of this competition. It is for the first time that we are organizing a competition like this. I, I am not aware of any comparable initiative uh, in, in other organizations. So the, the fact that we organize this on its own is already a very, uh, a very innovative um, um, thing. Next, please. So as I said, we, we, we are really looking forward for, uh, uh, looking forward to submissions. Um, um, if you are selected as, as one of the winners, um, so to speak, uh, you will get something in return. Uh, one of the things is that we will allow you to participate in, in, uh, in a conference on, on key technologies. And this conference will be organized in, uh, in London. We, as Cesar, we are planning to, uh, to write uh, so-called white papers uh, 
we write quite a lot of uh, a couple of white papers, of course, but uh, um, important white papers will be on, uh, first of all, linking uh, social sciences and humanities uh, and STEM. Uh, we will allow uh, student teams to, to contribute to that. Uh, we will also come up with a, with a white paper on, uh, uh, on the contribution of universities of science and technology to sustainability, and we will invite uh, student teams to, to contribute to that um, white paper as well. Having said this, um, next please. Uh, having said this, I would like to, to thank you once again for being here, for listening to me, for listening to, to Mark, who will address you in a minute. He will tell you what a co competition is really about, uh, uh, what the main purposes are, how, how you can participate and so on and so forth. Please, if you have any questions, uh, ask your questions to, uh, to Mark. He is, uh, he is there to answer these, uh, these questions. There's no such thing uh, like a stupid question. Uh, there's only one type of stupid questions and this is the, these are the, the questions that have not been raised. So if you have questions, please uh, come forward with your, with your questions. Um, and, and just to, to, to finish, uh, if you have some doubts, whether participating in this competition uh, is, is, is something you should or should not do. Uh, if you don't, just do it. Yes, it is there for you, it's there for, for, for society, it's there for, for sustainability, it's there to grasp your uh, uh, innovative ideas. We are, we are really needing you, we are really needing students to come up with, uh, with things that we, that we couldn't uh, imagine uh, so far. So please submit your proposals. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rick. And before I introduce our next speaker, um, I'll let him introduce himself um, as part of a video he made to promote the competition. So if you are promoting the competition within your own your own institution. This video um, is available to promote it um, to your students. Cesar, the strong and united voice of over 50 university of science and technology in Europe, is celebrating his 30th anniversary this year. We would like to invite you to join and to celebrate uh, this anniversary with us by participating to the Best ID 2021 competition. I am Marc, Vice President International at Centrale Supélec, Université Paris-Saclay, and I'll share the competition for the year to come. You are a student or a PhD candidate already collaborating on a brilliant ID linking science and technology with uh, uh, social science and humanities. You are concerned by the future of our planet and our society. You are ready to benefit of uh, the access uh, and the support of over the 50 leading university of Césaire and to win a cash prize of 20,000 euros. Then the best ID 2021 competition is for you. Are you? on your team up for the challenge? You can click on the link and you will find the call for abstract and the guide for applicants. And be ready for the online workshop October the 15th to find answer to any of your questions. Césaire looks forward to receiving your great ideas and we wish you good luck in competing for the best ID 2021. So now I invite Mark. Yeah. If you put the slides on. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, so I think now you can see me no, in person. Apologies. Uh, OK, OK, thanks. And now I invite Mark to, to give us the 
yeah, you see this now. An information session on, on Best Idea 2021. Mark is the Vice President of International Affairs at Sans Super Lake at the University of Paris Saclay. And he is the chair of our work group, Best Idea. Mark, I give the floor to you. Thank you very much, Callum. And um, good, uh, good evening, good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you can see, you have me in person after the film. And since I have a, I had an haircut, yeah, but it's still me. I'm happy to have you on, on this uh, presentation. And, and um, I can see that you are more than 40 participants. Probably most of, um, of you are students, uh, and some of you are probably uh, also a member of the uh, staff member of uh, Césaire uh, Universities. So I hope that you are all safe and in, in good health uh, and ready to participate to that, that competition. So next, next slide, please. So I will go very briefly uh, through this, this outline uh, in, in six points. And, and uh, not to, to I, I won't take too much time in order that uh, we, we can answer your, your direct question. And I, I already seen a few of your questions and, and I think you will find some answers in the presentation. So next, please. So the competition is, is uh, uh, has been thought uh, within the Césaire uh, uh, network in order to give the chance to, to our students to participate uh, uh, in, 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 in the competition and to give, uh, to promote their best ideas, uh, mostly in the view of, uh, we are looking for innovative uh, ideas uh, that would help uh, revo revolutionize the, the society's effort towards sustainability. And the, the main idea is how to science and technology uh, can contribute uh, to ecological, economic and social sustainability. And we are also looking for the, the link, horizontal link between uh, social and human sciences with, with uh, uh, STEAM uh, uh, science, uh, technology and, and engineering and mathematics all through key, key technologies. And the, the, the end of the competition will be uh, in our uh, next uh, 30th anniversary celebration in, in Sweden, hopefully uh, fully in person uh, next October 2021 in Lund, uh, Sweden in Lund. So next, please. So why enter this, this competition? Um, the idea is to, to engage yourself uh, from a bottom-up approach uh, with your teammates uh, and uh, to propose uh, to um, your, your already uh, ideas, your project uh, of which you are working on. Uh, and, and we will help you to design and to showcase these ideas uh, within the network and, and more largely because you will have the opportunity to, uh, to showcase within the conference and some, some events in 2021. Uh, we would like also to generate cooperation between the uh, Césaire members, Césaire universities, uh, because most of you are, are students from Césaire universities. And, and we would like to encourage you to, to, to um, uh, create synergies uh, between uh, universities uh, among Césaire. And if you participate, you, you will benefit from the, the, the very, very high level access and, and support from, from these universities, Césaire University, and more than 50 leading universities uh, in science and technology, mostly European. And also to, to, uh, to have a cash price, uh, which would be a total amount of 20,000 euros. And then your ideas will be showcased, uh, as I said before, be, uh, during the grand finale in the 30th anniversary in Sweden, but uh, also could be uh, also um, demonstrated or showcased in, in, in additional conferences, like that, the next one in, in, in UK, in London, in the spring 2021. So next slide, please. So, what, what uh, are we looking for? We, we, we um, try. We would like to see a concept, uh, a bottom from from emerging from from a bottom-up approach for student-led uh, teams, already collaborating uh, around the well-identified scientific and um, societal needs uh, or goals uh, aligned with the um, sustainable goals of uh, as defined by the uh, the UN. 
And the idea may originate from completely novel approaches and to, to answer specific questions, scientific questions, and also to, to respond to, to the specific uh, societal needs or, or, or specific stakeholders in, in society. So it's, it's not only science, it's also how science can impact and, and can interact with society. And we have thought the competition as flexible as possible uh, uh, to, allow, to allow you to, uh, to have many, many different kinds or type of ideas and also to have a lot of diversity within your, your teams. Next slide, please. So the, uh, you, you know already this uh, sustainable development goals as defined by the UN and the ideas we are looking for uh, should take place in, in some of them not all, of course, and there are 17, but, but one or two or three altogether addressed by your ideas with a very uh, scientific background and, 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 and a social impact, a strong social impact. So the so next one, please. So how to build your, your team. So we invite you to uh, have a, a, an horizontal dimension of your team, interinstitutional, which means that uh, as many uh, partners you have within your team from, from different universities, uh, the best it is, uh, but also transdisciplinary, uh, which means that uh, scientific and technological uh, aspect, but also uh, social and human sciences, as I said before. So this is an horizontal dimension and also vertical uh, diversity integrating uh, students from, from bachelor, master or PhD level altogether. Uh, with uh, staff members, uh, scientific staff members from your university. So the, the, the leader of the team should be uh, someone already enrolled as a bachelor student or a master student or a PhD candidate from one member of Césaire University. So if some of you are not from Césaire uh, member universities, so you have to join a team led uh, by a member, a Cesar member uh, university. And the teams, each team must include at least <coughs> one uh, staff member or faculty of one of uh, our Cesar members. Of course, we would like to see diversity, we would like to see uh, transversality. So the more members uh, are involved, uh, the better it is for the for the scoring, and I, I will go to the um, I will come to the uh, the scoring of the uh, of the abstracts uh, very soon. So next slide, please. Uh, there is no minimum or maximum team size. Uh, you 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 can be uh, uh, just few of of uh, yourself or, or, or as many as as you can. Uh, it's not uh, a score. There is no restriction on that. Um, uh, diversity, as I said, is, is highly encouraged uh, and especially we encourage you to, to add external uh, participants from non-members from university uh, who are non-members of, of Césaire, but also uh, partners from industry, for government or non-governmental organizations, the civil societies and so on and so forth, civil society, sorry, and so on and so forth. The more you are diverse, the better. Next slide, please. So now how to apply. So we, we start the call for, for abstracts uh, a month ago, a month and a half ago, and today is the, uh, the info session. Uh, and now we, we, we invite you to prepare the, the short abstract and, uh, and you will have a description of what is expected uh, in, in, in the abstracts. But mostly we, we want you to describe your concept and how science and technology can help the society uh, sustainability. Uh, we would like you to outline an implementation plan and, and also to describe your team composition. Uh, and you'll see uh, in, in the next presentation uh, given by, by David Beaumont uh, very soon, uh, more in detail as uh, a template, which is very short. Huh? And the deadline is, is uh, of the abstracts is the 31st January 2021. 20, uh, so it uh, gives you plenty of time to, to, to work on that. So next slide, please. So the calendar, the calendar, we start the process last summer uh, and we are now in, in the uh, beginning of the call for abstracts. 
uh, it will be open until uh, the 31st of January 2021, and not 2020, uh, where you, you will submit your, your abstract to undergo the evaluation. Uh, then a first evaluation will happen. And uh, we expect to have a ratio uh, success rate, uh, something like uh, one over 10 to be returned uh, for, the next, uh, for the next run. And then the, the, the maybe the, the, the next run uh, IDs will be uh, um, coached by, by people from, from Césaire. And then uh, during the summer 2021, uh, we will have a final evaluation of the, the remaining IDs. Uh, the selected IDs from, from uh, the spring will be uh, evaluated a last time in summer to, to be uh, ranked and, and, and with uh, one winner uh, to be announced in October 2021 in, in Sweden. Uh, and the team, um, the team will be invited in, in Lund and to showcase the ID and to receive the prize. So next slide, please. So just um, I just forget to say that the the, the IDs will be uh, evaluated by a, a panel of experts, international experts, uh, and then they will evaluate your IDs following three dimensions. The first dimension is scientific excellence, so it includes a sol solid scientific uh, uh, background and uh, of your teams uh, and on your IDs and testified by a senior academic. Um, you will have to demonstrate your horizontal integration. That means the, the, the transdisciplinarity of your ideas uh, or interdisciplinarity of your ideas, linking uh, social and human sciences and, and STEAM, and demonstrate your vertical integration and from, from students from bachelor, master, and PhD, at least two of these categories uh, out of three. Uh, involved in the guidance, uh, uh, sorry, and also the, uh, the, the, how the, the guidance of the senior academic, the principal investigator is, uh, is defined. And you will also have to describe in the, in the abstract the, uh, the initial needs of uh, ICT and, and, and how you will manage uh, your, your uh, research data. This is the first dimension of evaluation, scientific excellence. The second one, next slide, the second one is impact on outreach. So it's, you should provide an outline of uh, what will be the expected impacts uh, of the ID. So you will have to describe the, the, your contribution or the contribution of your ID to the, the ecological, social, or economic sustainability, the indicators, uh, the key uh, indicators to estimate the impact uh, on the, its contribution to sustainability. And also to uh, describe the uh, and, and also to describe the, the role of the main stakeholders, especially if you have external uh, stakeholders, including the uh, members, the other members university universities from Césaire, but also non-members university outside from Césaire, and also uh, what kind of um, outreach strategy you have defined. So next slide, please. It's a third dimension of your um, of the evaluation. It's management and, and implementation. And it's not outreach, but implementation, management and implementation. So it's how how you what are your plans and, and, and how you will monitor the implementation and, and how you will evaluate uh, the impact of your um, of your IDs. Um, uh, how you the ID the, the project will be managed and which based on which organization. What kind of uh, human resources you will need to, to, to implement your ideas um, and also uh, you will have to provide a rough uh, estimate of finance uh, you will need to, to, to implement and to manage uh, the ideas. It's something like a, a business case, uh, your, your business plan you will have to develop and to identify the key legal issues and, and, and the principal risks uh, of, of the idea of the implementation of the ideas. So three dimensions, uh, scientific excellence, impact on outreach and management and implementation. And these three dimensions uh, will have to be described, outlined within the, the, the abstract you will submit uh, within the three next months. So the next slides, please. So the next steps uh, now, uh, we will receive all your abstracts uh, by 31st of January. All the abstracts will be evaluated by the, the, the panel of experts um, 
and uh, the successful one uh, will receive full guidance uh, to help uh, and, and how to develop the, the, the design of the ideas uh, a, a bit further and to advance toward excellence and mature ideas. The selected teams will be invited also to contribute to a conference on care technologies in, in London, organized by the, the, the Royal Academy of Engineering in, in London, something like spring 2021. And we'll be invited also to contribute to white papers, uh, to some white papers, several white papers, uh, written and proposed by, by, by Césaire uh, on how linking um, social and, and human sciences and STEAM and uh, another one on, on about contribution to sustainability. Uh, you know, the, uh, Rick uh, Van de Waal, the president of Césaire, uh, uh, described you the, the role of Césaire and one of the main roles is, is to express uh, the place and the role of universities, uh, science and technology universities in Europe. So you will participate to that. Uh, and you will work, uh, we will work with you and, and your institution staff and, and, and or several institution uh, staff to, to implement your outreach strategy. We won't help you in scientific excellence, but we will help you to uh, implementation and outreach uh, of your IEDs. So they will, you will undergo a, a second assessment after this first uh, evaluation and selection. Uh, so the, the selected teams will undergo a second assessment in the summer 2021. And then finally, uh, the, 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 the first one will be, uh, a, a, one team will be selected as a winner and, and will be uh, invited to, to present and showcase the ID uh, in October, 2021 in, in Lund, which will close the uh, 30th anniversary year of, uh, of uh, Césaire. With this, this big event with, with the, the, the 40, uh, 43 universities all together at the same place. Uh, next slide, please. So I would like to, to thank you very much and to, to keep you very uh, uh, committed, engaged uh, uh, and concentrated on, on, on your idea and, and the abstract. You will have a, a short description just after me on what, uh, what would look like the, the ab abstracts. Uh, but we'll remain, all the team and myself will remain at your disposal for the, the questions, not only today, but also until the, the submission in, in January. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mark. And now it's a question that's already come up in the Q&A mm -hmm. about the, the template, template abstract. Our Secretary General, David Beaumart, will, will take us through it. David. Thank you very much, um, Callum. A very warm welcome also from the side of the Secretariat to you all here. Um, uh, in this information session. As announced, uh, I have the pleasure and honor to present to you the template uh, for, for the abstracts. Next slide, please. Uh, so the question is, where, where is it? Uh, we will make the template uh, available um, on uh, the call page uh, on our website and also in the guide for uh, uh, applicants, please read uh, uh, both the call and the guide for applicants very carefully. And the final submission um, deadline is 31st January 2021 at 24 hours Central European time. Next slide, please, Callum. So in order to determine the eligibility of the abstracts that are submitted, and there has been quite some questions already, and uh, it has been mentioned several times, we need to check the enrollment of the leader of each team with one of our member institutions. Uh, this is why uh, if you intend to submit an abstract, uh, you must send an email to our um, advisor for higher education, Indre uh, Amtanovic um, by the 31st December at the very latest. And what we would need is the announcement that you intend to submit uh, an abstract. Uh, we need your full name. Uh, we need uh, the email address that you have at our member institutions that allows us to trace you in a unique way. And we need to know which kind of course you are enrolled to. Uh, we will go uh, to that member institution and we'll check your 
uh, enrollment with that university because one of the eligibility criteria is that you are enrolled at one of our member universities at the moment of submission. Uh, this is uh, an important step uh, enabling us to, to check uh, the compliance with this eligibility criteria. Next, please. I think that was it, at least in terms of the presentation. Callum, if you stop sharing your desktop, I will take over and present the template. Um, I quickly go through the template as announced. It's a template that actually complies with exactly uh, the uh, fonts as described in the guide for applicants. Um, very important is that we also provide you with some guidance and some help. For example, you will see uh, that there is a table uh, where you can actually yourself check whether you comply with the different eligibility criteria in English, submitted in time, uh, the font size, which basically if you don't change anything of the uh, at this template, you will, you will uh, be perfect, whether you have, your team uh, leader is enrolled, uh, and so forth. This is a checklist for you. Uh, we also uh, give a checklist to you to make sure you go through the requirements, the evaluation requirements uh, by yourself and try to answer that question for yourself. Um, there are important uh, um, uh, parts there and there was also a question just now. So what are the key uh you know success factors and i think it has been already introduced by mark there is a couple of those key requirements where actually the more you have the higher your score will be in the evaluation uh, this is certainly uh, the case for this horizontal integration so this means the more scientific fields from ssh and stem are connected in your idea the higher the score in the evaluation uh, this is also true for the vertical uh, integration. Um, I think another um, point where uh, the higher, the better uh, uh, is described is the involvement of our member universities. The more of our members are involved, the better you will score uh, in, in the evaluation. I would like to uh, address a particular um, requirement uh, as it's formulated here it says main stakeholders are analyzed and described i think uh, what we uh, would like to see in in your abstract is uh, that you know who these people are or who these uh, players are uh, and and that you're aware of that um, uh, and that you have included them in your in your in your team or, and, and considerations um, these checklists uh, basically pave the way and the advice really is to limit in the end um, uh, the abstract as such here on page three to exactly two pages only uh, without changing it. This is the core of your idea. This is uh, the, very, the very center where you will have to convince our indep independent evaluation panel. And anything, uh, that follows is actually supplementary information, but importantly, you may add a uh, fill in a entire page to make arguments around the team composition uh, and, uh, and maybe even your stakeholders in engagement in that context. Um, you may add another two pages uh, without actually adding text to what has been said before, but this is very much supplementary information. Think of charts, think of tables, think of figures, graphics, schemes, or similar. Uh, because, and you may actually refer in your abstract text to this information uh, to make a case. I give you a very simple answer. Uh, one of the requirements is that you should have an idea what the finances uh, involved are. This is a place where you could provide a table um, uh, in terms of um, making the case uh, or proving the case that you've claimed in, in the abstract. Um, Callum, is it already available now? I, I, I think uh, the link has been shared. I see a lot of people joining the Google Doc. Uh, 
<laughs> so I think from my side, that uh, was the short introduction on, um, on the template. So maybe we can have a look at the questions. Uh, thank you. Yeah, fantastic. So as David says, the, the link is in the chat. So you're welcome to click on it and explore the, uh, the template abstract for yourself. Um, so let's move to the, the Q&A. Um, I think we've answered the one on the template abstract. Um, then we have one from Natasa. What are the key factors in the evaluation process that an application um, which will make the application successful. David, you already answered this in the chat. Maybe you would like to expand on it. So I really, you know, the, the very idea about a contribution to sustainability is that it is something that addresses a need felt in real life. And that the idea actually aims at providing a concrete solution and have an impact uh, in society. So I think in, in terms of the success, we see also the trajectory that has been described by Mark as a trajectory to support a brilliant, excellent idea to bring it into practice. Uh, so I think it starts with a very good idea, with a brilliant scientific case, as, as Mark has said. And uh, through this process, through the months between the evaluation and, and the assessment that was announced by Mark, uh, the idea is to bring it into the next phase and closer to reality in solving uh, concrete problems of, of concrete people and concrete organizations. And I think in this sense, I would argue from my point of view, it starts with a brilliant idea and a dedication and a team and a commitment from your universities to support you and to bring it into the next step of reality. Maybe Mark. Yeah, brilliant. This is exactly what you said. Uh, I just uh, would like to, to add that um, to, to keep creativity and innovation on, on your ideas. We, we, we don't know what we will come out from this competition. Uh, and, and that's why also it's, it's not uh, a list of very perfect, defined uh, uh, and, and point by point, how many points on that, on that, on that. We would like to see uh, something very innovative. We would like to see something very creative. And, and because we don't want to to to, to pre-configure it, your ideas, it's, it's quite open. So, uh, and the idea should be brilliant and should be uh, dedicated to become reality and we will help you to that, but free yourself and, and give your best ideas you can and, and it will make it. Fantastic. And then um, another question from Natasa. Is it necessary to refer to published papers in their abstract? Who would like to take that? Perhaps Mark you, or David. Well, I've actually already answered uh, the question. I think if you need to testify a solid scientific case, uh, referencing is uh, is quite crucial. Uh, there's all quite interesting tips to put links so you don't lose a lot of uh, space. But of course, that's all known to the current student generation. Uh, Callum, if you allow me, there is a really interesting question from Evgenia yes. Sherman. Uh, what TRL is expected of the submitting? I really, I, I mean, the clue has just been given by Mark, I think. We are looking for uh, creative solutions. Uh, so um, the last thing we would do is say, we want TRL level six, five, seven, eight, or something like that. Uh, obviously, many of the uh, disruptions in innovation actually come from um, quite low TRL uh, ideas. Uh, so in this sense, I think there is no um, predefined idea about the TRLs level, uh, but as we are talking about science rather than about technological development, um, I think it's also a good idea to, um, to, to take this critique. Having said all of that, and Mark referred to your second assessment by Sumber, uh, 
2021, part of this trajectory to move from an idea to implementation is, of course, to become quite concrete. So it could very well be that on the basis of an abstract you describe uh, by December, uh, by, by the end of January, you will have moved to something much more concrete by summer. Uh, think of a 3D model or, or anything that could be one of those solutions uh, coming there. So in this sense, I think it's not so much about the TRL um, uh, and there is a huge uh, openness, I think, on the side of, uh, of the organizers of the competition to look in how you move towards implementation and what will be the state of your idea by the summer once you undergo the assessment, which could very well be an artifact or any other research output. Mm. Yeah, exactly, David. Thank you very much for your comment. It, it, it's, it's exactly that. We will help you to progress and, and to mature your ideas, but we won't at all help you in the scientific uh, progression in your ideas. So we will help you to the uh, outreach strategy. We will help you to the implementation of the management, but not on the scientific uh, progression of the ideas. Uh, so we will help you to progress not necessarily linked to this uh, so-called uh, TRL uh, scale, of course. Uh, I would like to come back to the question before, um, if I well, I've well understood uh, it's uh, Anna questions about the, the um, uh, reference, of course, references is, 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 uh, uh, is absolutely necessary to demonstrate the, uh, the, the scientific uh, background and, and, and uh, context of the ideas. But I, I, I don't think, and maybe David, correct me if I, if I say something wrong, your, your ideas does not need to be published already to, to be a part of the competition. Yes, that is a very important clarification. Yeah. And I agree. So I think uh, Callum in this sense, and, and Mark has actually just answered the question from Christian Dragos. What do you, you know, what kind of sustainability project would you recommend me for aerospace? Well, this is something we are never going to help you with because that's the very essence that we expect from you to tell us what your ideas are to make a sector that's uh, considerably challenging when it comes to sustainability, obviously. You know, and that's certainly a very interesting sector to make it greener and more, more sustainable. Uh, but uh, the idea is um, up to you, I think. Okay, fantastic. And then we had a couple of questions which are related on team composition. So are, uh, can a team of only students for the moment take part? Is it mandatory to include a, a teacher or a PI? And uh, are undergraduate students welcomed in the competition? So maybe we could talk a little bit about the, the composition of the teams that we expect. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, if I may, um, uh, the, the, the competition is, is, is a bottom-up approach. So it should be a student-led team. Uh, and as I, we, we have presented, uh, we, we address and we would like to address bachelor, master, and PhD candidates. So, uh, and at least two, um, two um, kind of, of those students, uh, at least a minimum two. Uh, among the three uh, category, uh, bachelor, master, and PhD students. Uh, you should have a, a, a staff leader, uh, an academic leader of the team, but then it's quite open. Uh, so you, you may have additional PhD candidates from other uh, member institutions. You can have additional staff member from different departments, for example. Uh, you can have as many as, as you like. Uh, but the idea is that the core of the team is, is a student team and led by students. This is something that Cesar is, is looking for uh, since long and, and as, as many, many uh, uh, network and university is to have the, this bottom up from, from students and to, to put uh, more visible uh, the students' uh, creativity and, uh, and the student ideas uh, amongst our community.
Tell them, I would like to take some open questions. I think it's important that we also look at the new questions. Yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, uh, if people are not satisfied with the answers that were given in the written ones, we can uh, they can uh, submit the new ones. But if you allow, I will take some of the questions that are in the open question. Um, what are our responsibilities after the abstract is submitted, asks uh, Jona Christina. Well, as I explained, the whole idea is that it will be quite hard work. And um, uh, part of the evaluation process is that this is not a sheer uh, scientific evaluation with a conclusion on the scientific quality of your, uh, of your abstract, but um, you will be assessed, as Mark just explained, on three dimensions. And uh, we have agreed with our independent experts that they will not just make conclusions about what you write, but they will also make recommendations um, whereby they stimulate you to take some follow-up action. Um, as you can see, uh, 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 the, there is a difference in the key requirements between the first evaluation and the assessment. So basically, uh, the teams will have to work uh, throughout uh, the period uh, between uh, January and, and, and August uh, to, to move towards implementation and to make their ideas excellent and to make them make them mature. Uh, so that still there's work to come. Um, as Mark has explained, you uh, we will give guidance. We will uh, uh, attribute uh, mentors to your uh, ideas if you're selected in the first round. And they will have regular contact with you to see to what degree you're able to follow up the recommendations that the evaluators have given. And you may expect that the evaluators will look at the second submission to what degree you have successfully done so. Um, in this sense, there, we, uh, it has also been mentioned by, by Mark, there are some invitation to contribute to some conferences and, and to some work uh, in, in the field of white papers then. Another question I can answer, I think, is the one from Evgenia on the SSH and STEM integration. Um, the uh, idea here very much is to rather than, let's say, STEM let and get uh, some SSH uh, into the whole thing, to take an approach whereby STEM and SSH up front are on equal footing. And indeed, of course, SSH. Uh, is there to, to look to the broader application, for example, of technologies in legal terms or in societal terms, can it also be in terms of human machine interaction, uh, taking into account uh, the behavioral sciences, but it could involve ethical considerations that are linked to, uh, to, to, to STEM related aspects. So I think that is very much the idea to make sure um, that you have the relevant disciplines at the table uh, 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 or upfront, actually, uh, and on equal footing. Uh, Mark, maybe you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted also to answer that question, but uh, you, you precede me. Thank you. Um, but Evgenia, you, you have also the, some some answers with the, the, the three dimension of the evaluation: scientific excellence. Scientific excellence is not only science and technology; it's also social and human science. So, the excellence can be put here or the SSH uh, part, but also the impact is a second dimension of the evaluation. And then you, you find also the societal impact of the ID. So my answer will be uh, both scientific excellence in SSH and STEAM is required and, and, and the, better, uh, the, the better you will be ranked and also the impact because the impact is, is we, it's it, that we expect to see a strong impact on, on society. Uh, because of these brilliant ideas, uh, melting uh, SSH and, and STEAM. Um, let me, uh, David, maybe answer Ilinka questions. Uh, how, how do you look at the team forming process? Uh, if I am looking for a team now, what advice would you give me so as to form this international and diverse group? So Ilinka, um, if you are from, from um, Cesar Member University, so you have uh, all the uh, Cesar Member University as, as first guess, first choice. 
uh, you have uh, probably, of course, some your university have probably, of course, some kind of cooperation within the Césaire uh, network. So you should have to look on that first. Uh, and it would be my, my, my first advice. Uh, you can ask uh, your, your, your staff members, uh, departments, labs, with, with, who, uh, with whom they are collaborating with, uh, and to find uh, partners uh, within that, that, that group. And I think you have a, a good chance to find Cesar members because we are 53 universities in Europe, all specialized and, and very good in, in science and technology. And then uh, normally you, you should have a, a lot of, of possibility. Um, so I think my first advice is, is to look around you and, and to look on Cesar members and to see if there is a match between your cooperating activities and the Cesar uh, network. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mark. I, I fully second what you've been saying. Uh, I actually think um, also after the consortia forming or the team formings process where you could liaise with the relevant uh, services of the of your uh, university. It is a, a very important feature to make sure that you um, uh, get the, success, the support needed from the universities. And I give you an example. If we say uh, we expect that you are aware and you know you testify any legal issues or risks related to your idea, this could, for example, touch upon intellectual property rights. Uh, we never want to own your property rights. We just organize a competition, but you will have to know how you would organize your intellectual property rights related to uh, the idea that, you, that you're having. And um, uh, of course, you are aware that uh, all of our member universities have an excellent and longstanding track record in technology transfer and they have specialized offices for that with people that are able to counsel you and to support you in how they would deal with the IPR related to your uh, to your idea. So I think this, this uh, advice from Mark to link with your universities and to see how they can support you both in the forming of consortia, but particularly also afterwards when moving to implementation is, is very important. The last phase, I think, where you could also look at your universities once you were assessed excellent and mature in the second assessment in the late summer 2021, uh, we will actually invite all of those excellent and mature ideas to come to our Caesar annual events in October in, um, in Lund, and we will present you to to our rectors and to our guests as 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 as, as brilliant uh, contributions to uh, uh, to sustainability. And then you will need some uh, help in 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 promoting what you're doing: social media, YouTube, video, whatever. Uh, those ideas that were assessed mature and excellent will get uh, a certain funding from us, uh, so we will also support you in that. But again, published affairs offices from members uh, can be very helpful in that respect as well. And then Natasa asked, will we have access to previous winner teams? I don't know if we said it already. This is the first time we hold this competition. So um, unfortunately not, but we're very much looking forward to, to finding out the new ideas you come with. Um, she also asks, um, do you need any documentation um, such an agreement between your university uh, as a partner in your competition? Do you need a, to show a, a, a document that the university is supporting you, I think, uh, in your application? So I think there we can be very clear, no, uh, because you only have these seven pages. So we don't need any annexes or uh, printed copies below. But it is, of course, helpful that uh, if you say, oh, I think in this, I, or we are quite sure there is IPR involved in this and um, we have the support of the TTO office. Uh, so I don't think you need an agreement or any uh, underlaying documents, but I don't know how you see that, uh, Mark. 
No, no, per perfectly right. Uh, I just would like to add that in each member University of Césaire, there is some liaison officer working with, with, with Césaire for the network. So try to identify on our website who is the liaison officer, and then he will have many, many answers and, and also try can contact for you uh, the, the partners uh, in, in other universities from, from Césaire. So check on the website of Césaire who is the liaison officer of your university within the Césaire network. This is someone from your, uni your university. Absolutely. Thank you. That's that's on our website. If you go to cesar.org and go you go to our the page on members, you will find the the, the name of your liaison officer, uh, institutional liaison there. Um, so we have another question from Evgenia. Can the the team include non Caesar members? Yes, of course. Um, as a, you have a, a lot of freedom to compose your team, there are um, some requirements and they have been read out by Mark as the student leader needs to be, or the leader of the team needs to be enrolled, there needs to be a staff member of one of our members involved. So uh, that's, um, that's really the requirements and, and involving colleagues from other universities other than member universities uh, can have um, legitimate reasons. I give you some examples. Uh, it can be that uh, the parts uh, that are uh, brought in by the students from a CSER member uh, are completely complemented by the expertise or uh, uh, the, um, uh, the persons from a non-member uh, university. So, and, 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 and that can be a very clear case also in scientific terms that you say we have complementary expertise or complementary uh, um, uh, knowledge and in, in, in bringing this into implementation. So yes, they can. Hmm. Yes, in, in the, uh, the, the, the grid you, you, have, you have seen in the slides, you see that external stakeholders uh, is, is open. So this university's no member of Césaire can be, uh, can be a, a kind of external stakeholders. But like industry or organizations, uh, governmental or non-governmental, and so on and so forth, of course, associations. There is an interesting question on a doctor who is an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. a business open owner, and the company could develop innovative idea that enter a global market. So we have business studies, we have medicine, I'm not sure what the question is, Natasha, but um, I mean, the very point to me would be, what is this innovative idea then? <laughs> that would be rather the question than the, the context. How do you view this, Mark? Yeah, but it's, it's also from, from where the doctor student is, is uh, still uh, studying in, in a Cesar member, yes. If not, then no. <laughs> So this is the, the regulation. Yeah? Fantastic. Um, and then Natasha, you have a question which I don't understand. Uh, so you may want to submit it again. Uh, doors as well in team network. I'm not sure what you mean here. And um, if anyone else knows, let me know, but you may want to submit it again. But we have a question from Mosin. Since sometime um, presenting ideas by video clip is uh, clear and better, can we they send a video clip with their abstract? Interesting. Mm -hmm. David. I think Mark, yeah, I think we have to be clear at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, we have foreseen in an evaluation uh, process based on paperwork. Um, and so, and, and again, I think the, the key part is those two pages that describe the abstract and the rest is supporting information. Having said that, we've had quite long discussions also with the independent experts and in our uh, group that is uh, organizing and steering this. And we are very well aware that down the road, uh, next towards next summer, uh, 
there is a, a very big likelihood that it's not going to be paperwork that we'd be looking at. If we are successful with you, your idea will have come, you know, sort of into a, a next step of maturity and, and design. And uh, we are very well aware, actually, that, of course, video clips, but also pitching and those kind of things could be interesting ways to present the progressed ideas that uh, that you've gone. So I'm sorry, uh, I think you'll have to have a paper now and uh, then see how you move it down the road and we'll see where it ends. I don't know how you view this, Mark. No, it's the same. I was going to say exactly the same thing, exactly. But, but we do, of course, have a very open to interesting ideas for communication and outreach. So, um, yeah, this, this can, you can put some very interesting ideas in your in your abstract on this case. Um, so then we have uh, another question from Natasa. Does a PhD student as team leader um, can the company um, can they have the company that will implement the idea? Sounds uh, like a very good implementation plan to me, yeah. but there is already a company involved that can implement the innovative idea. So that sounds like a sound implementation uh, direction. Very good. <laughs> clear, clear path for that one. Um, then I think we have a, 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 we had a point from Christian. Um, he's thinking about his idea, but I don't think we can give further advice on that, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, and then actually, I, I think we have answered everything. If uh, maybe you have some final thoughts, David, Mark, uh, I'll check in the I'll check in the Q and A um, that everything is done. But uh, be, please, before the final thought, uh, I, I was just thinking about the, the ideas uh, which won't be past the evaluation. So uh, you will be many of 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 uh, a few uh, that won't pass the the first evaluation uh, level because we want to be selective in, in that competition. That does not mean that the ID is, is uh, rubbish and, and, and don't worse to be a company. Uh, in, in that frame, uh, there is two uh, possibility for the IDs is to, to get matured and, and maybe in a year or two to be resubmitted in the next run of the competition, if we can uh, run it up fully. And the second, uh, the second issue is also to get awareness and, 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 and the visibility within your institution and then probably get some more help or more visibility and, and, and commitment from your institution to, to accompany you uh, with, with the ID. So I think that it's, it's not only for the, the winners or, or the selected IDs, it's, it's also for all the participating teams that it's interesting to, to, to enter that, that process. I think from my side, Callum, I would like to uh, fully second what Mark just said. Um, part of this uh, endeavor uh, for, for us at Cesar, and this is why we are reaching out to, to you students here today and through this competition, is that we would like to bring best cases and best ideas of this contribution to sustainability out there. So this idea of communicating these ideas and the successes of these ideas uh, is extremely important. It's part of what you could call science communication outreach. And, 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 and it's an important aspect where also we from Cesar will provide you with stages, Mark has, uh, has referred to, to, to the Cesar annual events, but we'll also have some funds uh, for, for your communication and outreach uh, activities. Uh, most important, I think, uh, my, my final word is to really underline that this is about trying to solve real problems for real, real people or real, uh, real contexts and to bring them into practice. So this is very much a development and, and is, a, is a step forward. And, uh, we on our side, we are ready to guide and support you, not on the science case, but in many of these respects. And I think what Mark has also 
underlined now several times is that the more we work together also with your university support offices, uh, that the bigger the chance that uh, you will make a difference in with with uh, pushing this idea towards maturity and and implementation. Fantastic. And whilst you're giving your final thoughts, we do have a couple of extra questions. Um, first, um, do we already know how many ideas will be selected? And maybe a related question is how many teams will be invited to Lund and um, will the selection of the winner be done there? David, I'll let you first, maybe. Yeah. We are, as and, and it has been said, this is the first competition for us. Um, so for us, it is very uh, difficult to predict how many submissions uh, we will get. What is very clear is that only ideas, or let's call them abstracts now, will be selected that score a high overall over all the three dimensions that, that that is very clear and mark has already indicated i think once we have uh, a reasonable uh, or we have that selection of of of, of abstracts that are uh, evaluated high on all three dimensions there's something uh, gonna happen with them in one or the other context mark already pointed out to the institutional context in which things are happening so that we don't have a, a prefixed idea on this at this very moment, but but we will only select those um, above the quality threshold. Now that's equally true, I think, for the question from Barankova, because let us assume you have uh, X number of um, ideas or abstracts selected and they go through the guidance uh, by the university and, and us, uh, in summer, and I think that's a very crucial point, is you will make the decision whether you want to undergo the second assessment, because you is up to you to judge whether you think you have now reached this level of excellence and maturity to, to do it. It is thinkable, and Mark has hinted that, that we, this is not a one-time shot from our side. So that would actually mean that there is sort of a pool of ideas that moves towards implementation and maturity. Um, in this sense, we can't predict how many will be invited. Uh, we have stated very clearly again, all those of which our independent evaluation panel um, in the second assessment says there are excellent and mature, they all will be invited to present their ideas. All right, so we will give all of them money to reach out and to communicate and we'll give uh, a stage for you to present uh, these mature and excellent ideas. But it's very difficult to say how many teams it is. We have to wait how many abstracts we get, how many of them are eligible, how many of them are assessed, uh, are evaluated uh, high on all three dimensions, how many of those will actually really do something and go down the path of implementation with us, how many will decide to be assessed, how many will be assessed excellent and mature, too early to call. Hmm. Uh, very clear answer. Um, just to, to, uh, to add on, um, would like also to be selective uh, in the the mean that we, we we want to invite every ids to, to to be selected and to come to to lunt of course so selectivity will be uh, something that we we would like to uh, uh, to engage in the selection of, of ids but of course it will depend of of the content of the ids and how many will brilliant ideas we, we will get uh, so we, we expect something, as I've said already within, during the, the presentation, something like one over 10 uh, will be selected or two over 10, depending really, really on the contents. But we would like to, to have high selectivity uh, in the first row. And we will see depending on how many we get and how many uh, uh, will score a uh, high level uh, or not. Thank you. I just answered a, a final question from Evgenia. Um, so in the Q&A, I provided a link to the 
a link to our members page. So on those pages, if you find the page for your university, you can find the institu institutional liaison, um, who is the, the link between your university and Cesar, um, as Mark was saying earlier. Um, and I think... Just, as, uh, Callum, yeah, sorry. The, the second part of Barankova question was uh, where uh, and when will uh, happen the selection of the winner? And uh, so the selection of the winner will be uh, uh, around September, next September, uh, David, uh, um, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And then it will be announced in Lund. Exactly. So the second assessment will actually look at, you know, which of those ideas are excellent and mature now and which of that idea is the winner. Uh, we will not reveal the winner before the Caesar annual events, but it will indeed be announced as part of the high level conference um, with, uh, we imagine, all of the ideas uh, that are accessed, excellent, mature in the room and uh, the winner to be announced uh, at that very moment. Fantastic. Well, in this case, we're right within time. Um, I invite David, Mark, is there anything else you would like to say before we, before we sign off? Uh, it was very, yeah, just, just to say that I was very happy to, to, to see this, uh, uh, this meeting, this info session, very lively and, and very interactive. And, and, and thank you very much for all the, the participants. And I, I, I hope that you, 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 you have fine, you have found, sorry, uh, answers to your questions. Don't hesitate to come back to us. Uh, you will find all information and contact information on the Césaire website, eh, Calum, and, and, and then you can still come back to us and, and we will answer but uh, thank you very much for your participation and i, I hope to see you uh, uh, in person in a year to come in lund i join uh, mark in thanking uh, participants for for being here with us today i equally thank them for the interaction uh, that we have had here albeit only in uh, online contexts I think in the end, it is all about being an agent of great transformation. And I encourage any of the participants today to dare and to step forward and to hand in a brilliant scientific context, uh, concept uh, and a team that's willing to work with us and your universities to make things uh, for the better. Thanks a lot. Wow, thank you, David. I think that's a fantastic way to sign off and good luck to all of you. We really look forward to, to seeing your abstracts and good luck to everyone in the competition. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.